Section 1.4 is on page 40, talks about inverse and algebraic properties of matrices. So inverse matrices and or inverse of a matrix and algebraic properties of matrices. We have a lot of properties and not to worry as much. You don't have to memorize all of those. Notice that it just applies that traditional addition. You could add in any order you want. You could multiply in any order you want as long as you're not switching those. So notice A is in front of the parentheses. A, B. That's not the same as B, A. A, C. That's not the same as C, A. Watch here. See how they put A on the right? You see here now you're saying it's B, A. And you're saying it's CA, and that's nothing like this. So don't mix those together. As long as you keep everything in the same order, you're set. And these properties we're going to refer to in the homework. They're going to say verify, you know, uh, uh, verify uh, out of theorem 1.4.1e, for example, with B, C, and A. And you do that, and I'll show you how that works. Then we have another one talks about you know the zero properties, adding a zero, subtracting a zero, right? That doesn't change the matrix either way. And if you subtract the same matrix from itself or add the negative of that, it's zero as well. Zero times any matrix is zero. And if C times A equals zero, then C equals zero or A equals zero. Now be careful. This is C assuming C is a constant, but if matrix A times matrix B equals zero, then nothing. That doesn't mean A equals zero or B equals zero. Be really cautious with those. Don't add your own. Theorem 1.4.3. It says if R is the reduced uh, raw echelon form of an M by an N matrix, then either R has at least one row that is zero. So if it is in reduced raw echelon form, Either you have one across all the diagonals, and that's considered the one in matrix land, or one of the rows is zero. So that's what it's saying. So it's saying either R has at least one row that's zero, okay, then that doesn't mean anything, or it's the identity. If it doesn't have zeros, it is the identity matrix. What's so special about the identity? You take any matrix, multiply it by the identity on either end, you get the matrix back. So the identity matrix deals takes the place of one in real number multiplications. Now, definition one is important to understand. If A is a square matrix, square means the number of rows equal the number of columns. And if there exists a matrix B of the same size, where if you take A, B, and B, A, and either way you get the identity matrix, then A is said to be invertible or non-singular, and B is called the inverse. If I multiply A times a matrix forward and backward, and either way I get the identity matrix, we say B is the inverse of A. If any if A if there is an inverse or an inverse for A exists, we call A invertible or non-singular. And obviously, if the inverse doesn't exist, we say it is singular or it's non-invertible. Now, theorem 1.4.4, the importance of that says, if B and C are both inverses of matrix A, so if you have one matrix and you figured out that, hey, B is an inverse and there's another matrix C is an inverse, then guess what? B equals C. What does that mean? That means the inverse of A is unique. It's one of a kind. That means you can't find two of them. You can only find one inverse. Now, here's how to find the inverse. This is a shortcut given a two, specifically for two by two. If you are given two by two, the inverse of the matrix, the inverse of the matrix denoted by a to the negative one will be one over what's known as the determinant of matrix A. I'll tell you what that means in a minute. You swap those and you multiply those 
bayana girer. Now what is the determinant of A? Determinant of A is simply this product minus this product. C, B, or B, C. It doesn't matter. There's another way of finding an inverse. It's a bit longer than this. If you have matrix A, write down the identity. Do the row operations. If you get the identity on the left, whatever is left on the right will be the inverse. That's a lot of work. This trick only works for a 2 by 2. If it's a 3 by 3, this is what we're going to do in the next chat, next sections. But for now, let's stick with that. This is something you should definitely memorize. Now, again, the rest, if A is invertible, then A, B inverse is B inverse A. They swap places. Those, you should just look at them. And if the problem says, if I wanted, if I wanted you to verify this on the exam, I'll pretty much give you that and say verify, given A and B. Verify that A, B, inverse, if B, inverse, A, inverse. So again, just make sure you not use it. Look at that. It seems if you have A, inverse, and you take the inverse of that, they undo each other. If you have the inverse of A to the N, now be careful. If I said A squared, that means you take A and you multiply it by itself. If I wanted A cubed, then you take A, multiply it by itself two ti three times. This says... If you have a cubed and you're taking the inverse of that, basically that is find the inverse of a and then multiply that by itself three times. And that is goes on with all of these properties. Again, you need to verify them. Again, right there it seems if you want to take the inverse of the transpose of a, well, take the inverse of a and the transpose of that will work. And here's how we're going to play this game. So verify the following, again, this is out of 1.4.1. So verify the following uh, uh, matrices and scalar satisfy the properties. Well, let's see. If I gave you A, B, C, and these are constants. Verify that, again, this is in 1.4.1. Well, what is that saying? That says take 4 multiplied by B, C. Well, what's B, C? Let's see. Let me write that out, even though. It's going to be lengthy, but it's okay. B is 0, 2, negative, well, positive 1, negative 4. And C is 4, 1, negative 3, negative 2. This is three, 2 by 2. And this is 2 by 2. The inners match and the outcome is 2 by 2. So that's going to be 4 times. And how does it work? 0 plus 6, 0 plus negative 4, 4 plus 12, 4 plus 12 is 16, and 1 plus 8 is 9. And if you multiply that by 4, what do we get? We get negative 24, negative 16, 64, and 36. Done. If I proceed and look at this. What is A times B? And then when you're done with that, multiply that by C. So they're saying those are the same. Well, let's see. Isn't this 0, 8, 4, negative 16 multiplied by 4, 1, negative 3, negative 2? The outcome is 2 by 2. And to generate this first row, I use the first row, multiplied, and again by this. That gives me the first 0, that's a negative 12, a negative 24, 4 times 3, right? And to get this into and multiply it by this, 0, 8 times negative 2 is minus 16, 
to generate the bottom row. Here's the bottom row, and I multiply accordingly again. 4 times 4 is 16, plus uh, 16 plus 3 times 16 is 3 times 16. That is uh, 48, so that's uh, 64. And if I multiply this times that, that would be 4 plus 32, which is 36, and it does match. So yeah, it's right. And then they say, well, also, you could do B, and B happened to be 0, 2, negative, uh, positive 1, negative 4, multiplied by AC. What's AC? A is 4, and C is 4, 1, negative 3, negative 2. So they're saying if you do that first, it's the same thing. And that is 16, negative 12, 4, and negative 8. And if I multiply those, I get a 2 by 2. 0 times 16 is 0. 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. 0 times 4 is 0. And 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. And then 1 times 16 16 plus 48 is 64. And 4 plus 32 is 36. And as you see, it satisfies all of these conditions. That's really how we're going to use this. We're going to show another property. So few properties. Again, I copied down A, B, C, and the coefficients. Here it's saying, verify for me that if you take first B plus C, if you add B plus C, what would that be? B plus C, if you add those, isn't that 4? 3, 1, minus 2, and negative 4, minus negative 6, and multiply that by A. A is 3, negative 1, 2, 4. The outcome would be, the outcome would be 12 plus 6 is 18. Negative 4 plus 12 is negative 8. Generate the second row, use the second row, multiply accordingly. Negative 6 minus 12 is negative 18, and 2 minus 24 is negative 20. Done. Now let's see if that matches kind of like the distributive property. Well, let's see. I need to find two things. I need to find B, A, B, A. That is 0 plus 4, 0 plus 8, 3 minus 8, and negative 1 minus 16. And then we want to find CA. What is CA? CA is simply 4, 1, negative 3, negative 2. Let me write that a bit nicer. 4, 1, negative 3, negative 2, multiplied by A. A is 3, negative 1, 2, 4, and that would be what? Again, 12 plus 2 is 14, negative 4 plus 4 is 0, uh, negative 9 minus 4 is negative 13, and 3 minus 8 is negative 5. And if I add those, what do I get? If I add those two, four plus four is eighteen. Oh, let me make sure I have to get that. One uh, no there. Zero times hey. Something's not right. Let me double check. Okay, well, let me add anyways. Uh, uh, 8 plus 0 is 8. Negative 5 minus 13 is negative 18 because we're adding. And negative 7, that's negative 22. Just the 8 is not negative. Let's see how we got 8 here. We got 8 here by multiplying negative 2 times... Uh, uh, no, no, the top one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. The top one. 
So we got that by taking 4 times, that's negative 4, negative 4 plus 12 is positive 8 there. And they match. So that's pretty much how we're going to verify those. Nothing more, just, you know, whatever it's asking for, multiply, divide, add, subtract. This says, if you take A plus B transpose, okay, well, let's see. Again, we're verifying this identity. What's A plus B transpose? Let's take A. A is 3, negative 1, 2, 4. And if we add it to 0, 2, 1, negative 4, that's pretty much the parentheses. That would be what? That would be 3, 1, 3, 0. And the transpose of that is what? 3, 3, 1, 0. Okay. It's saying that should be the same thing as taking the transpose of A. Well, what's the transpose of A? Isn't that 3, 2, negative 1, 4, plus the transpose of B? 0, 1, 2, negative 4. And if you add those, does that give me this? 3 plus 0 is 3. 2 plus 1 is 3, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, and 4 minus 4 is 0, and guess what? They are equal. And that's pretty much what we do. Just a bit of busy work for now. To push this to the left a bit. And if I look at... this part. This says if you take a, well a happened to be a 4, and multiply it by c. c happened to be 4, 1, negative 3, negative 2. So what would that be? That would be 16, 4, negative 12, and negative 8. The transpose of that is, make that a row instead of a column. And make that row instead of a column. There you go. It says this is the same thing as taking a, which is 4, and multiply it by the transpose of this. Now, the reason they're mentioning those is because one of those is easier than the other. One is much quicker. And if you multiply those, 16, 4 times negative 3, negative 12, 4 times 1 is 4, and a negative 8, and it does check again. So, not that bad of a section. Just a bit of verification. Now let's talk about the inverse. We're going to do the inverse the same way they do for now. Later on, it's your option. Well, let's see. If this is B, to denote the inverse, we say that is 1 over the determinant, the product of those 6 minus the product of those. We're going to switch. We're going to swap those. Put the 2 top and 3 there, and multiply those by a negative. So 1 over 6 minus 5 is 1. So that's simply 2, negative 1, negative 5, 3. If you multiply those two, this and this, you should get the identity matrix for a 2 by 2, which is 1, 0, 0, 1. If I wanted to find the identity for this one, well, this uh, the, the inverse, not identity, I'm sorry, same thing that the inverse would be 1 divided by the determinant, the product of those negative 6 minus the product of those negative 8. You swap the diagonals and you multiply the non-diagonals by a negative. This turns out to be 1 half. And that would be negative 1 half, negative 2, a 1, and a 3. And that would be the inverse of D again. If you take D multiplied by its inverse or take the inverse multiplied by D, you should get the identity matrix. That's how you check your work on a test. If you have time, that's very wise to do. How about the inverse of this? Well, the same deal. To find the inverse of this, I'll say, well, okay, call this A. The inverse of A will be 1 over the determinant, that's cosine squared, minus plus sine squared, right? Okay. 
and we swap the diagonals, well, they're the same. And we multiply the non diagonals by a negative. And cosine squared over sine squared, isn't that a 1? So basically, the answer is right there. That will be the inverse of A. Again, if you have time, multiply A and its inverse. You should get the identity. Here's the next problem up. There's A. It says verify this property for us. Verify if you find the inverse. Well, let's see. Let's take the inverse. The inverse of A is 1 over the determinant. That's 8 minus a negative 12. So that's plus 12. Swap the diagonals and multiply the non diagonals by a negative. So that is 1 over 20, isn't it? So the inverse of A is. 4 over 20, 3 over 20, oh, you know what, leave it as 4 over 20, that's okay for now. Negative 4 over 20 and 2 over 20. We're claiming that's the inverse. Then according to this, if you take the inverse of that, so if you take the inverse of 4, 20, 3 over 20, negative 4 over 20 and 2 over 20. If you take the inverse of this, you should get a back. Well, what's the inverse of that? 1 divided by the determinant. That is 4 times 2. That's 8 over 20 minus, so since it's a negative plus, 12 over 20. Swap the diagonals. 20 over 2 and 4 over, tw 4 over 20 and 4 over 20. And multiply the non-diagonals by a negative, that will be 4 over 20 and 3 over 20. Okay, that doesn't seem to work. Oh uh, boy, why is that? Oh, 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 oh. Huh. Okay. <laughs> the product of those, that is 8, not over 20, 8 over 400 minus a negative, so plus 12 over 400 okay that's much better i was like wait a minute this is not working so isn't this one over 20 divided by 400 times 20 over 200 oh, over uh, 20 over 20 is a one that's two over 20 oh boy Gotta be careful when you write these down. That was 2 over 20, right? So, you know what? I don't know why I write so small. Uh, if I leave those on, so here, let's just figure out what this is. Okay. Uh, is it negative? No, we multiplied. So 1 over the determinant, we multiply the non by negatives, right? Okay, what is this? What is 1 over? So that is what? That's 20 over 400. That is 1 over. 1 over 20, that's 20. If I multiply this by 20, wouldn't that become 2, negative 3, 4, 4? And hopefully that's what we started with. 2, negative 3, 4, 4. Yep, so it does check. Perfect. Which is 8. And as you see, again, verifying this is some work. And I put a derivative. I'm sorry. I'm so stuck. Old habits are hard to die. And it's an inverse. All right, how about this problem? Okay, how does this work? So the way it works, if I take the inverse of the inverse and undo each other, so 5 
a transpose is actually the inverse of that. What's the inverse of that? 1 over the determinant, that's negative 6 minus a negative 5, which is plus 5. Swap the diagonals. Multiply the non-diagonals by a negative 1. So 5 times the transpose of a, this is negative, so negative 1. So that changes all the signs. And to get a transpose by itself, divide by 5 both sides. That's negative 2 fifths, negative 1 fifth, 1 and 3 fifths. And in this case, if this is that transpose, then a would be undoing that, which is negative 2 fifth, 1, negative 1 fifth, 1 fifth, 3 fifths. That's how you find a. And if you go to part B, the same deal, again, by the theorems we just read, if you take the inverse of A, inverse, it'll undo each other. So A would be simply, again, look at those theorems as you're doing this, 1 over the determinant, 1 over 10 minus or plus 3. Swap the diagonals, multiply the non-diagonals by a negative. So A would be 5 over 13. 1 over 13, negative 3 over 13, and 2 over 13. And there it is. All right. Something slightly, slightly different. I want to do focus on A and B. That's what I sent in the homework. Given matrix A, again, let's make sure we understand what this is saying and how this plays. It's not that bad, really. Just slightly different than what you're used to seeing. So if I take... <coughs> if I take in part A, P of A. Well, A is this matrix. It says, find, compute P of A given A is the matrix. P of X is X. That's A, whatever that is. Minus 2, but in matrix land when you say a constant two times one you put it two times the identity and what is that p of a a is two zero four one minus two times and the identity is one zero zero one so what is that that turns out to be four two minus two uh, two minus 2 that's 0 0 minus 2 is negative 2 and uh, uh, what else 4 minus 0 is 4 and 1 minus 2 is negative 1 so that's what P of A is assuming that P is uh, 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 what do you call it now, P is a function that takes A, and in this case, just take, make it A and subtract a 2 from it. And that's basically the idea. Now, let me go up a bit. I'm going to move this a bit to the left. What about part? Oh, come on. What about part? Oh, it doesn't want to write. What about part B? P of A, again. Oh, that's an awesome P. Now I worked it. Oh, wait a minute. That should be 0, 0. Oh, here. 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. I guess you say something. And this P is not, oh, I don't want automatic shape. Here we go. Okay, P of A in this case, it takes 2 times A squared minus A. And whenever you want to write a matrix, whenever you want to write a 1 in matrix land, you use the identity. 
any number is going to be multiplied by that identity. You can't, for example, here, you can't say a minus 2. What is that? A matrix can only be subtracted from a matrix. So you use i for 1 always. Well, in this case, what are we doing? We're doing 2 times a squared. What's a squared? Minus a. And what's the identity matrix? It's one across the diagonals and zero everywhere else. Well, what is this? This is two times four plus zero, zero plus zero, eight plus four, and zero plus one. Minus, if you combine the, oh no, no, you can't. In order, don't rush. If I multiply those by 2, I'm talking about 8, 0, uh, 24, and a 1. That was 8 plus 4, 12. Correct. Subtract 2, 0, 4, 1, and add 1, 0, 0, 1. And what is that? That is 8 minus, again, 8 minus 2 is 6, 0 minus 0 is 0, 24 minus 4 is 20, and 1 minus 1 is 0. Add to that 1, 0, 0, 1, and what do you get? 7, 0, 20, and 1. And unless I made a mistake, that would be my final result. And if I made a mistake, you would see it. We're not going to do C because this just doesn't work. And... We want to solve those using inverses. So to solve those us using inverses, what we need, we need to write it as a matrix equation first. We did that in the last section, in case you forgot. It says here, use the method of example 8. I'm not going to say that on a test. I'm going to assume you remember that. I'm going to say use inverse matrix equation. So what you do, you write this as negative 1, 5, negative 1, negative 1 multiplied by x1, x2. If you recall, we did that last time. And we say that equals 4, 1. So we write this as ax equal b. What we do, we figure out the inverse and multiply on the left-hand side by the inverse. The inverse times a matrix is the identity. And the identity times any vector is the vector. And this is going to give you c. And therefore, you could figure out what x and y is. That's the idea. So the idea is leave some space right there. Find the inverse of A. So if I take A and A happen to be, okay, I'll work on that underneath. If I take A and I say this is A, this is X, and this is B. Oh, I need B. Okay. So if I take the inverse of A, wouldn't that be 1 over the determinant? That's 1 plus 1, that's 6. Swap the diagonals. Well, that's negative 1, negative, not on diagonals by a negative. So the inverse to this matrix is negative 1 over 7, negative 5 over 7, 1 over 7, and negative 1 over 7. If I multiply on the left-hand side by that, If I multiply on the left-hand side by negative 1 over 7, negative 5 over 7, 1 over 7, and negative 1 over 7. Whatever you do to the left, you do to the right. Here, I should get the identity matrix. So here, I don't have to multiply. I could say that's the identity of a 2 by 2. Now, you could multiply it and check to make sure that you're doing this correctly. 
and the identity times any vector is the vector or matrix it doesn't matter here two by two two by one i'm gonna get a two by one so here i'm gonna get let me space those out a bit <clears throat> I'm gonna get two by one and let's see negative four over seven minus five over seven and four over seven minus one over seven so I'm getting negative 9 over 7 and 3 over 7 let me check the answer make sure maybe i made a mistake but that's that's the concept of how well, this is being done okay i see the mistake uh, i put a i put a negative one there instead of putting a three so if we make that a one there's the answer now let me do the next problem let me be a bit more careful but you get the idea. So this is the easy. You take a matrix and you say, I'm gonna write this as two, negative two, one, four, multiplied by x1, x2, and that should give me a four, four. Now, if you take this, put it underneath, and do some spacing, a bit of spacing. So this is what you did again. You wrote this as a x equal b. The idea is for you to multiply by the inverse of a on both ends. This will undo each other. You're left with x, and this will give you a vector c. And this way you could read x and y. That's the idea. Well, to do that, let me leave some space right there. Let me go on the side and figure out what the inverse of a is. The inverse of a is 1 over, and again, let's do this slowly so we get it right. Determine 8 minus a negative 2 is plus 2. That's 1 over 10. Swap the diagonals and multiply the non-diagonals by a negative. So I'm getting the inverse to be 4 over 10, 2 over 10, negative 1 over 10 and 2. The reason I'm not simplifying this when I add them, they'll have the same denominator. Now multiply on the left-hand side by that inverse. Again, it's very important the order you do this in. So you can't multiply on the right, for example. Okay, let's space out of it. We already know this is going to give the identity. And the identity times any vector or matrix is the vector or the matrix. It's multiplying by 1. That doesn't change any value. Here, I'm going to get a... Uh, this is 2 by 2, and this is 2 by 1. I'm going to get 2 by 1. 16 over 10 plus 8 over 10. 16 over 10, let me make that bigger a bit, so we agreed we were going to get 2 by 1, we said 16 over 10 plus 8 over 10, and for the bottom, negative 4 over 10 plus 8 over 10. So altogether I'm getting x1, x2 <clears throat> to be 60. 24 over 10. If you divide by 2, that's 12 over 5. And 4 over 10, if you simplify, that's 2 over again unless i made a mistake that would be the answer so the solution is 12 over 5 and 2 over 5 and that should be what it is and that's pretty much it for this 
section. 